Boom. There we go. But now can you, <laughs> you might not be able to see me. Might need, might need to go back a little bit more. And I'm gonna get my treats. Might bring my kitty, Miss Money Penny, into this video. Shake this bag, I tell ya. She come running. Hello. You heard the noise? Come on. There we go. Hello, everybody. Not an ideal camera angle, but I don't want the mic too far away from. Whoa. Too far away from uh, where I'm sitting, just so the audio sounds good. Um, Oh, let's flip this up a little bit. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Alright. Yeah, so today I was going to start my practice pad shed series, which I'm thinking maybe 5, 10 uh, episodes of just practice pad stuff. For you guys, I've already done a series of videos. Uh, if you Dig back through my live videos on um, drumming for drummers who either are non-drummers or who just simply don't have a kit. So if you go back through my live videos, you'll find five separate lessons for people who don't have sticks. Just It was just literally rhythms, working through some concepts um, with your hands on your knee and just figuring out some theory type stuff. All right, so yeah, we've got a few comments coming in. I probably won't be addressing them um, that much while the lesson's going. Feel free to ask whatever though. <coughs> or leave a comment in the actual comment section, not just in the chat. Um, okay, one thing before we get going for today. Now this popped up on a local forum here. And uh, I did offer to do my best to answer it or address it before we get started on the actual lesson today. The question was about 16th note triplets and how to feel them, how to execute them well, how to play them well, um, oh, and sort of it popped up in the thread, how to actually count them. Now typically, um, we don't count all of the notes in a 16th note triplet. It's just getting too fast. Um, even at a slow tempo, it's going to be too fast to uh, count, really. In, in a practical sense. So if I put my metronome, our tempo today is going to be 60. It's going to be really slow, 6-0. So if I put my metronome to 60, hopefully you, you guys can hear this. This is what 16th note triplets are going to sound like at 60. So the best way to count that I haven't actually come across a universal way to count that, so I would count it off the eighth notes. I would go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now that's one thing to get that sitting nice on a pad with a metronome. It's a different thing when you're coming into it as a fill. So what I would do is maybe even if you're just on your pad, I'd play perhaps a bar of time, just like a Billie Jean, Money Beat, um, and then one bar of 16th note triplets. Three, four, here's our time. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. And Now, the next thing I would do is I would flip the metronome so now the clicks are on the offbeat just so we get a nicer 16th note triplet feel. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I actually practice more with my metronome on the offbeats 
than on the downbeats. Uh, I find it's a lot more helpful. What happens with drummers is, especially if you practice to a downbeat click all the time, you sound like you practice to a downbeat beat click all the time, and you start chasing those clicks, like it's shooting practice, like da, 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 and you're ignoring what's happening in between the clicks. Putting the click on the offbeat forces you to really focus not only on your downbeats, but what's happening in between the beats. Trust me, it really irons out your time. Now, one thing that happened in this um, discussion that was happening on this forum that I <laughs> offered to try and help out with, there was also a little bit of confusion with a six stroke roll. 16th note triplets, six stroke roll. A, these things are completely different. A six stroke roll is a rudiment. It's a sticking pattern. Now a six stroke roll is a right accent, left doubles, right doubles, left accent. Everybody got that? If I keep repeating that, if I loop that, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, right. Accents are crucial. Now we could either play a six stroke roll using sixteenths and eighths or thirty seconds and sixteenths. It doesn't matter, but the sticking is the same. So if I play um, a six stroke roll as it's written in your percussion art society uh, rudiment sheet, it's going to sound like this. Or half time. Triplets. Completely different thing. So these are actually two completely separate things. Now the tricky thing here is you can play a six stroke roll in triplets. It's not necessarily in triplets, but you can play an interpretation of six stroke roll in triplets. Now remember our sticking here was right, left, left, right, right, left. Okay? Now if I even those out so they've all got the same note value, triplets, normal tri single triplets, six stroke roll triplets. But yeah, coming back to the sort of the original question there, it was, um, you know, how to sort of feel and count 16th note triplets. Use the eighth note, uh, count it off the eighth notes. That's my best uh, help. If you're still struggling with that, let's double the, play the same tempo, but we'll double the metronome to 120. And now this is giving us eighth notes. And two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. So yeah, with that initial question before we actually get rolling on the lesson today, um, please just understand a six stroke roll is a rudiment. It's a sticking pattern. 16th note triplets, that is a subdivision. That is a rate of notes. Your 16th notes, uh, 16th note triplets, you're talking about six notes per click. So hopefully that clears that up. Now let's get into actually what we wanted to hit today, which is uh, just singles and doubles. Now singles, right, left, right, left, right, left, on and on and on. Doubles, right, right, left, left. Now let's start with some singles at our nice leisurely tempo of 60 BPM. And we're just going to be playing 16th note singles. Who's with me? Give me a hell yeah. Is there anyone out there who's actually joining in? So this is 16th notes at 60 BPM. Not triplets, 16th notes. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, 
four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. <sighs> Sun is shining. World's gone mad. Oh, we got drums. We're gonna jump into forte on the count of four. One, two, three, four. This is the best warm up I know of. Actually, just hitting the drums very slowly and as relaxed as possible. Craig Strickland, thank you for the Night Rider love. My favorite show as a kid. Piano on the count of four. One, two, three, four. Forte. Let's do the same thing left hand lead. Singles. One, two, three, four. M, mezzo. F. P. Keep that P going, concentrate, bury the metronome, M, F, oh yeah, feels good to be hitting the pad, it's my favourite time of the day, <laughs> that's going to sound bizarre, but I actually just, oh, this is my meditation time, same thing with doubles, just 16th notes, we will, this will get a bit more complicated as we move on, don't worry, this is the warm up phase. Um, so here we've got 16th notes, doubles, remember 16th note doubles, right, right, left, left, four hits per click. One, two, three, four. Right hand lead. F on the count of four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, P, let's get into our left hand lead for this one just so we can get things moving along. And get to the get to the good stuff. So here's our left hand lead doubles. Two, three, and a four E and a. <sighs> Crazy morning. Had my jab yesterday. So my right arm is completely dead. <laughs> Let's go to uh, F. P. Okay, so I'll just have a little break there. Can give you a Give your arms a little uh, stretch if you want, loosen them up. A couple of questions that are popping up. Uh, Craig Strickland, playing the offbeat is difficult but doable. Craig, I agree, it is an absolute, uh, it messes with your brain when you start out. Um, now, it's just essential for me. It, and it really helped me with my timing, helped me with fills because all of a sudden I could subdivide properly through a fill. Highly recommend it and I think my camera is just, Slowly drooping down. Let me know if you want a bit more Miss Money Penny action, my little kitty, and I'll shake that bag of treats and I'll see if I can get Miss Money Penny back in the action. Um, uh, Todd Gaster, all drummers out there, you rock. Uh, 
Hey Andrew, love your channel. One question for you. What is the best height for a snare? I'm struggling to find the best position. Okay. Um, uh, who's this for? Def Defutura? Um, put your hand out. Uh, like this. Bring your other arm up. And slap your hand. That's where your snare should be. Um, okay. Let's keep it going. Now, what we're going to do now is, because today is all about singles and doubles, and the best exercise I know for doing singles and doubles is just to bounce back and forth between the two of them within the same subdivision. Um, so if we start with 16th notes, 16th notes are really comfortable for most people. We've got a nice slow tempo here, so hopefully it's not too intimidating. And hopefully you can join in at home. So what we're going to do is we're going to play one bar, one 4-4 four, four bar of 16th notes. And then uh, doubles, one four four bar of doubles. And it's going to go a little bit like this. Two, three, four. Singles. Doubles. Two, three, four. Singles. Two, three, four. Doubles. Two, three, four. Is this easy enough for everybody? in the comments this should be well assuming you're a, a drummer this should be relatively uh, easy enough two three four singles two three four doubles two three now assuming that is easy enough for most people uh, let's give you a bit more of a challenge and let's flip the click. Let's flip the metronome. Now the metronome represents the and. It doesn't represent the one, two, three, four. It represents all the ands in between those numbers. So now we're going to have one, two, three, four. Same exercise. Two, three, four. Doubles. Two, three, four. Singles. Two, three. Three, four, doubles. Don't ignore the off beats. It's easy on the down beats. Yeah. Woo! Off the rails. Okay, we've got a really good question here. Oh, it's not really a question, it's a statement. Chip C, whelp. <laughs> whelp? That melted my brain. Flip the what? Flip the flux capacitor. Your click, what you're practicing along with, the thing that's outsourcing the time to you. Um, you want to use it. You don't want to let it use you. <laughs> so, um, often when I, when I first start out with um, flipping the metronome with students, it's obviously really difficult. I'm well aware of that. I had to learn it myself. It was hard. Um, so don't worry. I totally understand that. Um, so one important thing to remember, and I think most people get this a little bit confused, I'm not changing the metronome. The clicks are the same. I've changed what the click represents to me while I'm practicing it. Downbeats, numbers, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now off beats. One, two, three, four. And two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hopefully I've explained that well and that makes sense. Um, and as I say, there's no such thing, you know, I'll always say there's no such thing as a stupid question. 
and that is not meant to be easy if you've never done it before it's not meant to be easy it's meant to be really challenging because all of a sudden you have to subdivide evenly now <laughs> I can hear pretty quickly uh, normally within players um, if they've done offbeat click work because as I say, if you're always on the downbeat, you can sound mechanical because you're aiming for clicks without any regard for what's happening in between. And, um, you know, this is, you know, like our Sugarfoots of the world, our Gavin Harrisons of the world, um, they sound so good because they're taking care of all the subdivisions. They're not just hitting the downbeats in time. Everything in between is just crystal clear as well. Not to mention Gurgo. Let's give it up for Gurgo. Everybody caught the Gurgo Borlo video yesterday? Oh my god. Absolutely insane. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. Let's do the same exercise. One bar of singles, one bar of doubles. But this time we're going to play 16th note triplets. Now we're doing six hits per click. Money Penny, you want another treat? Oh, hold on, hold on. Come on, you want a treat? Come on, come up here. Everybody wants to say hi. Come on, money penny. Come on. <laughs> I don't think she wants to be on the camera. Come on, money penny. Yeah, jump up. She'll jump up. Okay, here we go. 16th note triplets, singles, into doubles. Click on the downbeat. <laughs> One, two, three, Four, one and two and three and four and doubles. Two, three, four. Singles. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. metronome for this one as well so now we're going to have one two three four 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 one two three oh not good bit jittery for me on the 16th note triplets there I'm gonna blame that I'm getting got my booster yesterday so um yeah my arms a little bit numb <laughs> and um, man I haven't done I haven't done that exercise for a while that is surprisingly bad but um hey we'll live with it <laughs> so far we've got 16th notes 16th note triplets uh, let's jump to 30 second notes why are they called 30 second notes? Why are 16th notes called 16th notes? 16 in a bar, 30 32 in a bar. So now we're playing eight hits per click. You with me? And we're gonna still bounce between singles and doubles. Hang in there with the questions. I will get to the questions. Click on the downbeat. One, two, three, four. Doubles, singles, three, four, doubles, singles, Ugh. Okay, I'm going to stop talking so I can try and play this good.
Now, ultimately the goal here is that our doubles are as smooth as, as our singles. Mine clearly aren't uh, right at the moment. <laughs> so it's something for me to work on. Now, within reason, of course. It, I mean, they are different strokes. Your sticks are different weights. The tips might be slightly different, whatever. Uh, hitting different parts of the pad, of course. But what we don't want is we don't definitely don't want this. Doubles. Ah, singles. Now that was probably exaggerated, but it, it's an example of playing in time with the metronome, but everything in between the clicks is just garbage. So yeah, that's what we don't want. Let's try our 30 second notes with the click on the offbeat. One, two, three, four, singles. Doubles. Doubles. Singles. Doubles. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Last one. So this is what you want to do if you want to improve your singles. For me, I would start putting them in different subdivisions and playing the click on the offbeat. It's going to drive you crazy at first. You're going to want to pick up your practice pad and throw it through the window. Um, I'd be disappointed if you weren't frustrated with that. Um, and I'd be surprised if anyone could do it instantly. It's, it's a quite a hard mental exercise. It's hard to stay in time. The other thing that happens with students, I find when we do get to that point where we can start doing an offbeat click during lessons is we'll start on as an offbeat click and then it will just slowly merge to being on the downbeat. Um, so you kind of just have to record yourself to get around that and make sure that you actually stay it on target. Okay, let's have a look at some questions here. Gurgo isn't human. Chipsy, I agree. I think he's actually a robot. Gurgo left a really detailed comment. I've pinned it on that video too. I think he's commented on all the videos I've done of him. And um, he left a really long and interesting comment. Check it out. Hillstrom Audio. Excuse me. My left hand needs a ton of work. I can think like a drummer all day and understand the theory. But after all of these years of playing guitar, my left hand isn't used to used to carrying an equal load <laughs> okay boy i'm gonna have to be careful with my just reading out live these questions i think <laughs> it's a bit of a that's what she said um i might have overheard it but are you planning on doing lessons like this on a weekly basis <coughs> every day question mark uh yeah that's a good question now i would like to be doing these lessons literally every day um I've actually already set up a second YouTube channel, if that happened. Uh, now, this is part of the reason why I ask people, hopefully respectfully, to consider subscribing to the channel. For me to commit to something like that, I don't like to do thing, things by halves. If I was going to commit to it, I'd keep it up for a while. Um, but I would need a bit of reassurance that there's going to be an actual audience for it and I'm not just, you know, sitting here <laughs> talking to no one. So that's, this is the kind of thing where I think people don't realize if they enjoy the channel, but ah, they can't be bothered subscribing. There's so many things I could do if we could build the audience, if we could make the channel more sustainable. Anyway, sidetracked me. The simple answer to the question is, could I do this kind of thing every day or every week? Yes, if we can get the subscriber count up, because the ratio is really bad. The numbers are good, the amount of subscribers is good, but the ratio is bad between who watches the channel and who's subscribed. Woo! Calm down, big, big fella. Um, okay. Hey, 
MLLA, I'm following your lead on the real field pad and a similar setup. Let's go, let's go get it, man. Any tips for wrist plane? Um, mm, that's something I don't even really think about. I guess it's just a dynamic thing for me. If I'm playing um, fast or, um, yeah, whether I'm playing with my wrists or my fingers depends on how fast I'm playing. And how loud for me so not really I I think it's more a thing of just just practice if you can just practice your body will figure out what to do there is a real paralysis by analysis when it comes to technique oh hold on I don't want to start doing double kick work yet because I don't know which technique to use just start playing double kick your body is smarter than you think your brain is smarter than you think you will figure it out you'll figure out a good way to play and if I showed you a foot technique, a slide or whatever, that doesn't say, I mean, it might not be the best thing for you. I'd rather just avoid that kind of stuff altogether. Um, I did subscribe. <laughs> Someone's put here. Yeah, I know. I, there, there is plenty of people who have subscribed. I'm not complaining about that. I really thank you for subscribing. Um, I'm just saying if I was going to commit to saying like daily live lesson, um, yeah, the numbers would have to be pretty good. For now, I'm going to stick with weekly. For now. Okay, back to the pad. Enough of me gas bagging. Let's go back to 16th notes into... Um, oh, hold on. This is relative to what I'm going to be doing. Got any advice for building your left hand double? Yes. This is, this is, this is it. This is it. We're going to do the same exercises that we just did. Singles into doubles. Starting with 16th notes, except now we start on the left. It's a mindset shift. It's a body shift. Your left is going to feel the downbeats. Here we go. 16th notes, click on the downbeat, left hand lead. Three, four. Singles, two, three, four. Doubles, two, three, four. Singles, Doubles. Hours a day of this. If you want to fix a slack left hand. Now all the authority is in the left. Two. Three, four, two, three, four. Singles, two, three, four. Doubles, two, three. It's put even more pressure on your left holding down the downbeats. How? By flipping the metronome to the offbeats. One, two, three, four. Left. Doubles. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. And on and on. Obviously, you can do that for longer than what we're doing here. Let's go to 16th note triplets. Uh, left hand lead though. Two, three, Boom. Doubles. Singles. Doubles. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Comment always surprises me. Sophia Mar Mar Marchildon. Um, nice to see, nice to finally see a talker be a doer. First time seeing you play live. I genuinely don't understand this comment. 
there are so many i'm not having to go at you sophie i just don't i literally don't understand it because this happens a lot people often saying hey when can where can i see you play or when can i see you play there are hundreds hundreds of videos of me playing on the channel i don't know whether those aren't getting pushed to you by the youtube algorithm or what um it's really weird so in my reaction video playlist i believe we're up to about 405 uh videos in that playlist it's a ton of videos i'm not you know clearly it's a lot of videos way more videos on my channel of me playing so i don't understand this i mean i don't know whether it's just not looking back far enough through the videos or um it's really weird go to videos on my channel actually there's a playlist of me demoing gear I think I've called it drum covers and gear demos. That's a good one for um, some playing stuff. So Sophia, I'm not having a go at you at all. I just, I looked, I don't understand it because this happens constantly. Hey, I, I've never seen you, play. do you actually play the drums? I've never seen you play. Hundreds of videos on my channel of me playing. Um, let's jump back into the 16th note triplets. Three, four. Doubles. Two, three, four. Ah! Two, three, four. Two, three, four. I'm not used to counting, like, <laughs> I'm not used to playing my rudiments in front of a camera either. Let's go 16th note triplets, left hand lead, click on the off. One, two, three, four. Doubles. Okay, let's go to 30 second notes, left hand lead, click is on the downbeat. Three, four. Two, three, four. Click on the offbeat, 30 second notes. One, two, three, four. Singles and doubles are endless. You never, ever master singles and doubles. Gergo is amazing. He hasn't mastered singles and doubles. Vinny is amazing. Virgil's amazing. Oh, Virgil might have mastered them. <laughs> I'm not sure. But look, to be honest, there's, there's just no end to this. There's no end to how fast we can go on the metronome. We're going very slow. Very, very slow at the moment. Um, 60 BPM. And, you know, a metronome can, you know, put up to 500. You're never, ever going to master this stuff. You just work on it. This is, it should be fun. It should be art. Don't look at it as mastering. Look at it as learning, definitely. Um, and just enjoy your time on the pad. I've given you a few exercises today. Hopefully you can use them. Um, I understand everybody's at different levels of learning and ability who's watching this video so don't feel pressured don't feel silly if you can't do the 16th note triplets for example if you need to hang out on the 16th notes for a week a month a year that's fine there's no rush to this no one no one's gonna master no one's mastering drums don't worry about that it's there's there's no finish line to this we're all just in the journey together that's a bit cheesy but um, yeah, there, there is no finish line. 
So please don't feel any status anxiety pressure to do anything I've done today. That first exercise that I did with the dynamics, um, you know, you might even want to do that with no metronome. That might be really nice for you to just sit there and go, cool, I'm going to do some singles. And I'm just going to try and make them feel nice to me. And I'm going to ramp it up. Crescendo. My decrescendo. My hang out at P. A really quiet P dynamic. And try and get those taps really clean. How's it feeling? You know, the sticks responding how you want them to. I'd speed them up a bit. Sometimes it's nice to free yourself from the constraints of the metronome. Um, now, one thing I did at the start was I tried to clear up the six stroke roll with the 16th note triplets. So if anyone was still curious about that, um, six stroke roll is a sticking pattern, right? Uh, let's flick this off just so I can explain it. Right, left, left, right, right, left right this is the straight way to play it it's a bit of like a marching it's a bit of like a marching um approach to it you can play it in triplets though you can play a six six stroke roll in triplets so here's straight triplets same sticking So I don't know if any of you listen to Motown music. I love that rudiment. I don't know if any of you guys listen to Motown music, but that is the Motown fill, is a six stroke roll in triplets. Boom. High tom, the rest on the snare. Floor tom. Thing of like ain't too proud to beg or those classic Motown tracks. It is a fast little um, fill actually. Yeah. So um, yeah, really useful. Rudiments are very useful. I'm gonna. Uh, I've got a video on the way. Uh, it's like a, one of my drum teacher rants or things I learned at jazz school video um, series, and it's. Um, yeah, and it's just about. The fact that you know we want everything or with my teaching personally I want everything to be related to music or at least be useful uh, just playing stuff on a pad is good that's where we can sort of develop our chops and actually figure things out but we need to get it onto the kit we need to actually start making music with it really important and often forgotten by people um, I mean, unless you're in a marching band and you're literally just playing on one surface, us folk that actually play a drum kit, we need to be able to move this around the kit. And that's where all the grip stuff just goes out of the window, you know, trad or, or matched, uh, French, German, American, I mean, I don't know. You're going to need all of those grips. None, none of them are worse or better. Um, you know, when I'm over on the ride cymbal, I'm probably playing French grip. Otherwise, I couldn't play on it. Um, and then when I'm playing on the hi-hats, I can't play French grip on the hi-hat. <laughs> well, I could, but it would just be ridiculous. So you need all the grips. That's where the technique thing, for me, falls over. People are... There's a, that paralysis by analysis when it comes to technique. And it's just... Just play. Just play. If you weren't sure how to do these exercises today or what technique to approach them with, I don't care. No one else cares. Just just play. <laughs> no, no, I've never played at a gig where the where the keyboardist was going, hey man, can you play um traditional grip on this song? No one cares. <laughs> that drummers care about that rubbish. No one else cares. Okay. Are there any questions before we go? And I'm really, really disappointed my little kitty hasn't come up for a treat. What 
What's that all about? Money Penny, are you coming back? Shocking behavior. Okay. <coughs> Alrighty, let's have a look. Robert McCambridge drums. This is so relaxing. I'm glad to hear. Might be my AM, what is that? AMS, ASMR or whatever that thing is. Could do that for drumming. Uh, scroll out. I've had a practice pad and sticks for about 15 years. Never used. Yesterday I thought I should pull them out and actually learn to play some day. I found your rush reactions and here you are again. Hey, good to, good to see you back. And then you've commented again, day one lesson. Universe is screaming at me. Yeah, man. Let's do the pad together. I will see you in a week back on the pad for sure. Uh, JM. You may not realize it, but your elbows are moving on the triplet pattern you are playing. Uh, yeah, no, I think I'm, I think I'm aware of that. Um, again, I, I, please don't take this the wrong way. I don't mean to be offensive. I just don't care. <laughs> I, ju I just don't care with technique. I don't care. I've never even considered technique. Um, I had a regular gig. Um, years and years ago, hopefully this doesn't sound big-headed, but uh, it was a pumping gig. It was a covers gig. Uh, lines out the door down the line uh, road. It was just a, a, a bit of a famous gig around town. Well, not famous. It was a it was a good gig around town. A lot of people every week, and you know I'd get people coming in and filming me side of stage. <laughs> it was crazy, and I'd be you know filming my feet or or whatever, and. Um, uh, one dude came up to me on a break and he was like, bro, that, uh, you've got crazy slide technique. And I was just like, what slide technique? So hopefully that puts in perspective, I don't even care. I don't even care. As, as long as it works, I don't care. And to make something work, you need to practice. So slide technique, it might just have been the technique that worked for me because I practiced a lot. Um, your body's different, your feet, your ankles and everything, experience is different, what you're trying to achieve on the drums is different. Something else might work for you. So it's not right for me to say, hey, you need to use slide technique because it worked for me. Technique, schmeknik, a little bit for me. Um, Hillstrom Audio, it's all about grooving with the groove. Hard out, man. Um... Any more complex patterns you recommend for daily practice? Now, this is a really good question. Um, and my answer is no. Um, I'm not sure where you're at with your drumming, but listen, we're either playing, uh, drumming is like binary. We're either playing a right or we're either playing a right and a left or, you know, two notes together or multiples of that. It's almost like digital in that sense. So it's just so crucial to get your singles and doubles down, down. Um, and then beyond that, I mean, if we look at, like for example, a five stroke roll. Let's, let's look at a five stroke roll. What is a five stroke roll? Right, right, left, left, right. Left, left, right, right, left. At that speed, a five stroke roll is completely useless. I can't use that. So we've got this little hurdle to jump to make it useful. Ah, I can use that. I might use that in a solo. Hmm. So, but to make to before we can make the hurdle to make it useful, we need it a faster and cleaner, right? Now, what is going on in the five stroke roll? Double, double, uh, doubles, double, double accent, right? So where are we again? We're back to doubles. We cannot use this rudiment without doubles. Paradiddles. Right, left, right, right. Double. Left, right, left, left. Doubles. We need to work on those basics to actually get them useful. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, and you don't need much. I mean, all of the old jazz stuff you know, uh, like uh, famous jazz solos or famous modern solos are made up of singles, doubles, accents. Um, and that's kind of it. I mean, let's look at, I started the lesson today with six stroke roll, which is, or triplets. 
16th note um, triplets, six stroke rolls. And then we could look at a five stroke roll. What if we bounced between five stroke rolls and six stroke rolls? Put a left foot hi-hat ostinato or even a right foot uh, kick drum ostinato under that. You've got yourself a solo. It's going to sound really cool. Um, and I'm not using anything. I'm not using anything fancy. It's just singles and doubles with some accents thrown in um, in terms of uh, rudiments. Hopefully that answers the question. Um, Jerry Wild. Hi, Andrew. I've tried applying different stress points when practicing paradiddles. It's fun, but not as easy as you think. Still giving it all though. Yeah, Jerry, that is really, really tough. Um, I would recommend having a look at Tommy Igo's Great Hands for a Lifetime. He's got a he's got an awesome section in there about um, paradiddles. Uh, helped me out. I think it would maybe help you out. Check it out. Tommy Igo, Great Hands for a Lifetime. Um, ah, MLLA. Thank you. Is that how I refer to you? <laughs> MLLA. Uh, thank you for the answers and help. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm going to be signing off soon. So um, thank you to everybody who joined me. These live lessons are going to be part playing, hopefully together, part me trying to explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. Uh, when I had Benny Greb on my podcast, he said something really profound. He said something along the lines of, nobody likes playing a game when they don't know the rules. It's no fun playing a game if you don't know what the rules are of that game. You're just, you know, sinking out in the middle of the ocean. You don't know what's going on. Um, so that's why I will try and explain what I'm doing. Um, and if anything here was already too difficult or too complicated, let me know. I can address it in the next one. I was thinking of doing like a live lesson like this and then like a live chat. Ooh, that left hand's not, sp not spinning the stick very good at the moment. Um, yeah, I was thinking of bouncing between live lesson one week um, and then a chat, like a discussion type thing, live, live discussion the following week. But maybe for now, I'll just keep it lesson, lessons the whole way through. Feedback welcome. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for joining me. I know everybody in the comments on the live chat is subscribed. So I thank you for your support. Um, and yeah, if anyone is watching and they weren't sure about subscribing, please um, understand that I'm not out to become uh, famous on YouTube. All it does is it just helps the channel to become more sustainable. Um, and what that means is uh, said a different way, uh, I can basically bring you more content like this. Uh, lessons, videos, it just means I can spend more time editing. <laughs> Half my life is editing videos already at the moment. So um, yeah, as you can tell from my sloppy hands, um, I, it's because I just do editing. <laughs> I don't, I don't get to play anymore. Just edit. So yeah, with that said, is there any other burning questions before we wrap up? Oh, Route 961. Hi Andrew, I've never watched a live stream before and I'm excited, even if I'm only joining at the end. Unfortunately, we are finishing off because it's been going for close to 55 minutes. Uh, just wait a bit. The video will... Um, sort of uh, render renders in the <clears throat> system and then you'll be able to watch it from the start and um yeah i think that is just about all from me it is stinking hot here i've closed all the windows just to make sure that we get some uh, peace and quiet from what whatever's going on outside i hope everybody has a great day um obviously i never want to get political on my uh on my channel but obviously a uh, bit of a crazy world out there so thank god for drums um we still need uh, entertainment as well we need to be uh, distracted a lot and and enjoy things and have fun 
So hopefully you um, join me tomorrow for tomorrow's video and um, next week also with another live lesson. Don't be afraid to tell me if the lesson was pitched too difficult or too easy. We can just adjust as we go. Um, oh, okay, one last thing. Last one, any comfortable minutes, hours of practice you recommend? No. <laughs> uh, that's, that's my, that is my, I'm not being, a, I'm not being a dork. I'm, it's just my legitimate answer. So whatever you can do, if you work 10 hour days, you've got a family, um, you know, you come home, you got to read a book to your kid to get to sleep and then, you know, you got to sort out dinner and all that stuff. Hey, five, 10 minutes a day might be all you can commit. Um, so you just do that. You just do whatever you can. There's no rules to this stuff. There's, it's not a, this is not a race or a competition. You just do whatever you can. Uh, when I was at music school, when I was at jazz school, I was at school probably, well, I would get there when the doors open at eight and I would leave when they closed at 11, uh, pretty much seven days a week. So what's that? Eight to eight, 12, 15, 15 hours a day, seven days a week. So just to put in perspective, um, that's, that's just the way it is. There's no, I mean, there's a, a massive, obviously great area between, between practicing five minutes a day and 15 hours a day. Um, so yeah, I can't answer your question. I don't know your personal situation. Practice for as long as you're engaged and motivated. As soon as you clock off and stop focusing, um, you're done. You're done really. So there, in saying that, there is nothing wrong with just popping something on TV and you could do some essentially mindless singles and doubles practice. Maybe on your leg. I don't know why I always do that little single stroke four. It's just a little thing I'll always do if, I'm, if I do have a TV on in the background I'll you know maybe work on those or um, do some five stroke rolls try and do the thing I was doing before bouncing between fives and sixes um, yeah there's, there's just no rules to this you know you might need to like just sneak in practice whenever you can and even just having the sticks just in your hands, you know, you might see, um, hopefully it doesn't come across as like showy or showing off. I'm always throwing my sticks around and, and playing around with them. It's just, I like to have them in my hand and, you know, throwing a stick, you have to readjust your, your grip. So you're sort of practicing in a way, you know, you spin it around and you grab it again and then you've got to reestablish that grip. So that's, um, I find it just a useful thing to do as well, but no rules. Um, what works for someone else might not work for you. There is, what I will say is there is no point setting an unrealistic practice schedule. I think that's actually counterproductive because you feel like you're failing. So if I said, um, okay, that's it. I watched the Gergo video and I, I'm going to be as good as Gergo or, you know, or that, or, you know, that's it. And then I say, okay, to do that, you know, let's start practicing eight hours a day. Now, of course, I can practice eight hours a day today, but what about tomorrow? What about when I need to pick up a kid from school? What about when I need to do this? You know, there's going to be a point where that's going to fall apart. Um, in saying that, that is the good thing about doing a full immersion course like a jazz degree. You're just, um, that's your life. That's it. You don't have time for anything else your life is drumming your life is music 24 7 you're dreaming about playing the drums at that point um so yeah there's just no answer to this it's just whatever you feel comfortable with and what's going to keep you happy if you practice eight hours a day in a week you're and you're miserable you know it's, there's no point to it 
Um, whatever works. Even the small things add up over time. Yes, indeed they do. It's been consistent. It's not about working 20 hours a day, but 20 minutes a day for five years. Yep, consistency is the DNA of mastery. Consistency is the DNA of mastery. AJ is 100% right. Um, 20 minutes a day for five years. Man, you will be getting somewhere. Now just think, five years is a long way away. Um, but also remember, five years is going to arrive at some point. Now, you could either arrive at that five-year point, 2027, um, having not done 20 minutes a day. Or you're going to arrive there having done 20 minutes a day. In that sense, the choice is yours. You can either yeah, embrace consistency and hard work or or don't. <laughs> so yeah, that one's up to you. Guys, I'm going to have to say goodbye. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to subscribe. Share my share my content with anyone who you think might like it, who might be looking at looking out for drum lessons. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Got a nice treat in store for you guys tomorrow. All right, all right. Signing off. Ciao.